Welcome back to another episode of It's Me Speaking to You. I am, as always, your host, Mr. Jeffrey Wilson, coming to you live and direct from the gateway to the West St. Louis, Missouri. And after a small hiatus, ladies and gentlemen, a small break, I am back. I am back bringing the pain to you and the heat once again. And today's guest is no exception, folks. He is a serious veteran in the game, in the entertainment game. You probably have seen him most recently on the hit TV series Empire where he played Mr. Lucius Lyons' best friend, Bunky. Man, we're going to talk a little bit about it. And his 20 years in the game, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Antoine McKay is joining us. How are you, sir? I'm well, Mr. Wilson. How are you, sir? I am very well. I am very well. We have, I have finally pinned you down. We have rescheduled more than once, tried uh-huh. to go at it one time, had some technical <laughs> issues, but we are back. Ironically enough, today is the day Empire comes back. We didn't plan that. This is how the universe worked out for us. Um, all right, all right. But you're doing well, my friend. How was your Easter holiday? Oh, it was great. It was great. Uh, you know, I got to spend time with the family. I've been really, really super busy the last three months or so. So it was really nice to just settle with the family and, and eat and play cards and just do those things that you get to do on those holidays. So it was great. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, like I said, I've been in contact with you a few times, and you obviously, mm-hmm. you know, you're really busy and got a lot going on. Uh, from your school to, you know, theater to more TV to movies, et cetera. Uh, we're going to talk all about it, my man. Like I said, you've been in the game 20 years, and I know you are currently living in Chicago, but that obviously wasn't always the case. Where are you from originally? According to my information here, you are a resident of the D, Detroit, Michigan. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, I grew up in a, a, a little uh, city right outside of Detroit called Inkster, Michigan, man. You know, and uh, then I moved from to Romulus. Tri- what? How far is that from Romulus? Uh, that is literally right next door. Oh, okay. So from Romulus. Lives out in Romulus. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then, you know, uh, after after college, I moved to Detroit proper itself, and it was, you know, I, I love Detroit, man. It's the greatest city in the world to me. I love yeah. it. But, you know, it's so. Great. Well, no, it's it's funny, man. It's so there, there's so much about the D that you know you can either love or hate. It's kind of interesting because uh, in our in our previous conversation, I asked you. Um, I had had on a gentleman by the name of Al Prophet speaking about a lot of the documentary he's done and so much of the rich criminal history, if you will, of the D. And you had said you had heard of the guys, Chambers Brothers, YBI, uh, Butch oh. Jones, et cetera. And have you heard of, a friend of mine is doing a documentary. His name is Seth Ferranti. What's up, Seth? He's doing a documentary on a gentleman by the name of White Boy Rick. You ever hear of that guy? Yes, man. Growing up, yeah, absolutely. We heard about all those guys, uh, you know, Detroit is a beautiful city, but and uh, but with with rich history <laughs> comes <laughs> some corruption. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, I I remember that whole stretch when from I'd say in about eighty three to the time I graduated from high school. It was it was a lot of stuff going on that was uh, less than desirable, let's say. So, yeah, for sure, uh, for sure, it really was a crazy time. So yeah. cool. Um, is that where you, you know, in, in Detroit, is that kind of where you got your, uh, you know, your first teeth sinking into the whole acting thing? Uh, yeah, you know, um, you know, my brother was an actor and is an actor. And, you know, I saw him perform in high school and that blew me away. And he was, he's so great, man. And, uh, and then after that, you know, I went to school, majored in theater. Uh, and, you know, I got the opportunity to audition for Second City, which had a satellite theater in Detroit. And. Gosh, I remember July 30th, 1997, at 12.37 p.m., I was hired by Second City. I was hired by Second City. Clearly that made a mark. (laughs) Yeah, it did. It did. So, and you know, it it changed my career completely, so. When getting into Second City, obviously that's a a, a whole other level, I think, of acting, man. I think, you know, if you're really good at that, that's definitely something to have in the repertoire. Um, obviously, you've been doing that for a long time, man, Second City. And I see, you know, on, on some of your hit lists here, you've worked with such greats as Keegan Michael Key, who's, you know, I think one of the most talented. Him and him and his boy, they got one of the best shows out right now with Key and Peele. Um, yeah, yeah. How, how is that uh, improv? I mean, I've always been, as an actor, I've always been, you know, weirdly scared of it just because you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, a lot of stuff's on teleprompter and the script. I mean, it's very a very organic kind of chaotic situation you throw yourself into, and it's really kind of a... Uh, what is it, a sink or sail kind of thing? What, what are your thoughts on improv and what that brings to an actor's repertoire? 
Uh, I it, uh, it it changed me as an actor. It it it, it brought even more humanity to it. Uh, it, it allowed improv allows you to see the flaws of humanity and capitalize on them rather than shy away from them. So mm. when acting, you, you are you're just more available to those things. So it's uh, it was it was a great a great experience. I was at Second City from ninety seven to two thousand and six, so almost ten years, and it was uh, it was one of the greatest educations I got. Uh, it, it changed me so much as an actor, as a writer, as, a, as an educator, as a director. It, it, it taught me so much about all those annexes of performances. It was a real blessing to have that. Yeah, it's very, very fascinating. And obviously, mm -hmm. you've taken you've taken that knowledge and information, and you, and if I understand it correctly, your wife uh, with McKay Arts. Um, you guys pretty much inculcate, or you know, you guys try to spread that word and spread that information and and, and the knowledge of what you have. Um, tell me about McKay Arts and how that got started. Uh, it was 2010, and we I had just finished doing an improv show with a group of people, and um, I had been away from Second City for about four years, and you know, I was still improvising here and there in the city. And I don't know, I just found that. Uh, it, could, it, it, it not only helped you as a performer, but it also grows you as a human being. It, it opens up your listening, and, uh, and we just found that, we found it to be very important that people have more access to those skills. So, you know, we wanted to, we started our company in 2010, and we wanted to make it affordable for people, and, um, and you know, that taking on another mortgage, so to speak, we uh, <laughs> we did uh, make things available for people, make it more affordable for people, and you know, and then from there it just grew and it grew and grew, and we're um, you know we're now in our sixth year, which is really crazy to think about. We started in January two thousand ten, uh, so and we've grown since then. It's been great. It's been great. And you have a performance coming up. Your students, um, like you said, they they all facets they take part in from the screen right, you know, from the bottom to the top. They, they, you have a performance coming up. Is that correct? Oh right, right. They all uh, get an opportunity to perform uh, at the end of each class. So we wanted that opportunity because some institutions don't. They let the they make the students wait two or three classes before they get an opportunity to perform. So. But we found it really helpful uh, to start preparing people to do it now uh, rather than wait to see if they can excel. It, 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 once they get the skill and if it's taught appropriately and uh, correctly, people are ready to get up there and, and show their stuff. And we found we've had great success with that. We've had no failures at our class shows. It's been just really, really great. So it's been a blessing to us. Very cool, very cool. I might, I'd be anxious to see some of that because I always like to see, you know, just young, young talent. You know, not necessarily green, but just really open. You know what I mean? They haven't been mm -hmm. kind of, uh, I don't know, jaded, been, if you will. Yeah, been <laughs> the, the hardest of the business so much. Absolutely. Right. Um, what you know, as someone who's been in the business so long, and you know, I'm whatever, not near as successful, but I've been acting a while. As, as someone who's seen so many more students, what do you see as as young actors or uh, just young actors to the game? mistakes being made, um, what, what primary, if you can kind of pin it down, um, would you say people, mistakes people make as far as kind of achieving that, I guess, next level or growth, if you will? I, I think people kind of get wrapped up in being famous. Sometimes when you have a bit of success, you you get wrapped up in that. And, um, you know, I know that was one of my shortcomings when I had, you know, my first successes early on in my career. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I, you know, it, it does something to you. And, and, you know, I was, a, I was young, man, I was a baby, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, it, it, it kind of skews your reality somewhat, but, sure. uh, I, I, I see that still happening, you know, and it's very common with this type of work because, um, you know, you, you are, you do get some praise from people and that, and that feels great. And, uh, if you don't know how to handle it or uh, just, you know, let it be what it is and remember that it's always about the work, right. um, that's what I think people lose sight of. It's about the work. That's why. Sure. Like you, We have a responsibility and an opportunity with what we do to, you know, help uh, change people or educate them. And when we do that, people appreciate it. And mm -hmm. and you ha and 
you know, again, I said, as I said, along with that comes praise, and you just got to know how to handle that and maneuver right. in that and realize that that is just a byproduct of what the real thing is, and that's the work, and it's doing it well and producing it well and executing it well. So. Well, and of course, that I mean, it would be ideal if we kind of come out of the box with that knowledge, right, you know, just have that full understanding and wisdom. But, you know, mm-hmm. in your 20 years, obviously – um, just kind of again going into kind of prep work on the interview here. It, you you have definitely had had some ups and downs and had to have you know a learning curve and get can find out you know what not to do. Um, and oh you man! Have experienced firsthand the downsides of kind of what you're talking about the, the the trappings of fame, if you will. Right, it is because you know when you when you do get out there and people do start to recognize you, people definitely want to be around you and. Uh, uh, and hang out with you, and that, and then that comes with, what do you want? <laughs> and you right. can have anything, and I mean anything. <laughs> so, um, and unfortunately, I walked down a couple of little dark paths, and it, you know, it, it certainly disrupted the work. You know, I uh, had a struggle with, you know, we partying too much, and of course, and uh, getting out there and uh, enjoying the the quote unquote notoriety and. Um, and I was in it. Then it became about that for a while, mm-hmm. and that, uh, and then you know, ultimately the work suffers, and then you realize, oh, this isn't about me at all. Right. <laughs> you know? So, so yeah, that's you know. But you know, you learn from it, and you pick yourself up, and and you grow up. You know, and, well, you know, and they- then. You, I would think something like that would help to add to the layer to help make you a better actor, if you will, you know, to for you can uh, maybe tap into something that – you understand what I'm saying? It help, gives you some of, of depth that maybe other, people's might not, other people might not have. Uh, I mean, right. I mean, it, it, I mean, it certainly has helped as I've gotten older and you know, some roles have been a little more challenging than others. And uh, you've had to take on um, some really – uh, go to some dark places, if you will, right. uh, emotionally. Yes, those things have been available to me because of experience, but I, I, on the other side of that, really hope nobody has to go through some of the struggles that I went through. You know? Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> to right. Uh, experience that. I mean, yes, um, live your life and, and enjoy it and be blessed with the fact that you get to do this for a living, but... You know, just avoid the traps because it can uh, it can it can derail your your career, and I've seen it to happen to so yeah. many people uh, to the point where they just don't participate anymore, and it's and it's a sad way to go. But I mean, it yeah. certainly does open up a lot of doors uh, as far as uh, emotionally growing. Right, uh, it does that for you, sure. Well, um, obviously, like I said, twenty Hello? is a long time to to kind of do what you've done, Hello? and so you obviously uh, recently recent success has been uh, Empire. That's you know mm-hmm. been a huge huge hit, which I'm not sure if any of you guys quite anticipated that. Um, there's so much going on in Chicago. That's obviously shot in Chicago. I've seen some of your, some of the other work that you worked on is done in Chicago. What was that process of uh, getting linked up to play Bunky on the hit series Empire? Oh man, uh, it, you know, it, uh, it, of course, it was another one of those dark times in my life. <laughs> it was um, my mother was very ill at the time uh, that the audition came down the pipe, and I really wasn't even going to go to the audition. Uh, but my wife was like, you know what, you should go. You should get it off, get you know, your mom off your mind. Uh, uh, and so I did go, and I and I didn't know to. Uh, I I I knew it was a big project, but I didn't know who was actually doing the project. So mm-hmm. uh, then I walk into, I get to the, I, my agent calls and I'm on my way to the audition and he goes, oh yeah, it's Lee Daniels and he's going to be in the room. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? It's going to be Lee Daniels. You can't just drop that on me right now. Right. Right. <laughs> no, Go but, uh, yeah, but, um, but you know, I got to the audition and I was prepared for it and uh, I read for Lee and, you know, we talked prior to the audition and he was, you know, he was a really nice guy. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it went well, and, you know, and thankfully, he cast me in, in the show, and, uh, and you know, you said earlier that not a lot of people or even the cast knew how big it was going to be. I knew it was going to be good because the cast was so great. I mean, you have 
Oscar, you have you know, three or four Oscar-nominated actors. You got my wife Taraji in the mix. Yeah, 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 yeah. We keep that on the low, right. but yeah, we right, right, in the mix. All right, exactly. Um, <laughs> she told me about you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but um, you know, she she was really, really. She's such a giving actor too. She made the place, you know, uh, safe. And her and Terrence both did that, and Gabby, of course, you know, was great in doing that and mm-hmm. um, making it a safe environment for everybody to do their thing. And we also did that, and it was just a great experience, man. It, and of course, it was career changing because you get 18 million people watching something; it's it, it really changes yeah. things. You know, somebody's doing the right thing. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Um, I, I don't know if you have any opinions on this. It's kind of been in the news recently. Um, I forget the gentleman's name, and I, I should have actually know this. The eldest lion, uh, the gentleman, the gentleman who plays the eldest lion, um, Mr. And, Byers. Yes, Mr. Byers. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, has obviously a very you know thorough training background, and I don't know if he actually said this. It was like a media spin. Wasn't quite quite too pleased with the direction of his character in the show, and just wasn't challenging him as an actor, if you will. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I, 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 I don't think that, I think that's come somebody spinning something because, you know, he's, he's such a giving actor and, you know, the guy, he's, he's a wonderful man. He's a hyper intelligent guy. You know, he went to Yale, man. It's yeah. like, that's You're that's right, no yeah. joke. Um, uh, well, you know, he's season, a one man. He was playing that that mental ill. I mean, he was he was killing that. He, he was dude. killing that. And, and you know, I, and that's why I just don't I, I don't think that's true. Um, you know, I, I haven't talked to him in a in a in a few, but you know, it's I, I don't think it's anything like that at all, right. at all, um, at all. At it was all. Just I a think... little chunk of dude. I didn't mean to engage in gossip, but it was just you know, there's uh, yeah. I just wanted to whatever. It's Address so it. funny <laughs> because it's so funny because you you hear these things and. It's the exact opposite. Everybody is so usually so happy on right. that set. It's it's such a great environment. I mean, people don't. I don't. I think that's also why it's such a great success. That uh, it is a family oriented set, and it's and it's it's great, man. It's great. It really and that is. is a great working environment, man. You get on mm-hmm. a set sometimes when it's cold and stiff, and you know you really have to up your game and bring the bring your your own performance. I mean, you do always, but when you're in that kind of nurturing environment, it just makes it so much easier. It does. You're from, so from right. Crew, you're so from crew, right. from crew to cast, really. I mean, it's, uh-huh. it's really yeah, that's well, so and true. I, and you obviously, uh, I guess I know you can't give any spoilers or any information, but you were taken out in the end of season one. I guess I just gave a spoiler there, but as far as your return. You were taken out in season one, and I know this might be an odd question. I don't know if you've gotten this question, but when I saw that, that was such a re- – when they pulled you out of the of the water and that post-mortem shot, mm-hmm. I was like, that is nasty. Dude, that was, that was six hours. Did, that okay, was six hours of makeup, did, man. Okay. It was crazy. Uh, a gentleman so that by the was name you. Of- that wasn't a mold? That was you? No. Uh, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it was me. It was crazy, though. A mold it, of you, we, I guess, is what I meant. Yeah. Right. It's so crazy because they pour this polymer on you, and and they make it, they let it sit on you, and then it takes all the hair off of your body, which nobody disclosed to me when they pull it off. Wow. Um, yeah, exactly. But then they shave it down to a really thin layer, and then uh, on the day of the actual shoot, they put you in the chair and then they just start paint. They put that like thin layer over you, so it forms to your body. And then they start painting on top of it. And man, the makeup artist for uh, Empire did such an amazing job. Uh, Karen and Ross were just amazing when they put that together. It was really great. It's really yeah, great. Yeah, I, I, it's crazy. I'm like, yeah, that's you know, green. That's some CGI. I figured that was something other than like real, real makeup. But wow. And yeah, that was that was real. Every bit, every bit of that was real. They did amazing. That is so so very impressive. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, obviously you can't talk about any potential return, any any dream sequences that might take place. But um, <laughs> what else? Um, what do you? I know when I talked to you before, when I was first trying to line you up, you were working on a pilot um, that you, I believe, have completed. Tell me a little bit about kind of what you're up to now, and I believe that that includes this pilot. What's that all about? Uh, you know, I just we just got picture lock uh last night which was really great um but we started shooting on the 28th of february so within a month we shot 
edited, color corrected, did music and sound, and it's all done. So we shot the pilot, and gosh, I'd been writing uh, this pilot for, uh, you know, five years, like writing and rewriting and rewriting it and rewriting it and rewriting it. And uh, just, um, but Margarita Shabazz, who's just, you know, a wonderful, wonderful uh, executive producer and director and um, and writer, you know, along with Norm Nolan uh, from Los Angeles, we all got together and collaborated on the final script. And, you know, it really came to life after that. And then Blue Light Productions, which is owned by Margarita Shabazz and her husband James, um, both just stellar human beings on top of being brilliant executors. Um, it was really, really great to, to get an opportunity to uh, take something that you created in your brain and uh, have it come to life. And we had an amazing cast and crew, and, you know, it was it was a blast. It was such a blast. Can, can you tease at all what it, what the, the premise is of the program? Um, it's about two writers who are uh, not quite hooked into reality as far as they go. <laughs> So, but uh, they have an opportunity. They have opportunities to really grow after some some major setbacks. Uh, but they have a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's really funny, and we really enjoy it. So, uh, do you have any kind of a potential release date? Any kind we might be able to? Uh, you know what? We just finished. We're we're gonna see where it goes from here. But you know, Screen Magazine just did a story. It's called Written Off, uh, and it's you know it's about two writers who. Uh, get fired from their newspaper job, and they have to figure out how to start over in their 40s, So, which a lot of people Ooh. are going through, you know. And, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and it's really kind of cool because it's not, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a story about people my age, you know, and there's a lot of people out there that are my age who want to see stories about us, you know, and uh, you're not knocking the hipsters or anything or no, no, no. Uh, anything like that. But, um, you know, it's a story about, you know, what you go through when you're older and uh, how you have to adjust. And then you find out, you know, the thing that you really love uh, isn't what you've been doing. So it's mm. it, it's cool. It's cool. Very interesting. I have to check that out. Yeah, and fellow Leo, you're born August 10th. I'm born August 18th. What's up? Woo! What's up? <laughs> Summer baby. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, so that's, I'm going to wind this down here a little bit, and I don't want to get too deep into maybe what your political leanings are, but I tell you what, this 2016 presidential election has turned into, for lack of a better term, pardon my language, a shit show. Oh, what gosh. Are th- what are your thoughts on this whole all of it. Both sides seem like they're losing their mind. What do you? What's going on here, man? Uh, you know, it's so funny uh, because uh, when I was in school, I wanted to. I really, for a long time, considered political science as my major because I loved politics so much, and I was like I? seriously thinking about running for office and things like that. Uh, uh, then I joined a fraternity, and that was over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Too much black man material. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but uh, what was um, uh, but you know when you study politics and you see the foundation of politics, and then you see what it has become, mm-hmm. it's really it's really saddening and frustrating. Um, and yes, this year um, it's it's just not impressive. It's not impressive. There's you know there's really. Well, it seems like so person. much vitriol on both sides. Like Bernie Clinton, people can't stop being violent against the one the one side. Trump people can't stop snapping on the other side. I mean, it's just like I've never seen so much vitriol and really violence. You know, so much like it from inside the the whatever the whatever those things are called. You know, the protests in the, or the when those guys come to campaign things and they kick people out and all that stuff. Right? Like, it's, yeah. It's, you know. It's it's, yeah. It's 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 been really visceral. More yeah. visceral than normal. Um, I I think we were better years ago. Unfortunately, uh, when when it came to our protests, when it came to our uh, our, our political points of view, we could sit down and intellectually engage in those conversations. But now that we're, um, you know, and 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 we both are. Um, in the media, and we do, you know, like it because it's a part of what we do. It's, I, I think it's in some cases 
uh, it's harming uh, oh, yeah. because it's uh, it's you're. <laughs> Some, some like of the Dr. people King that they said, well, Dr. King has said, you know, we got to get to a point where we can, we got to be able to disagree without being violently disagreeable, and that's the we are we are being we right now. It's like we're so reactive. If you say one thing, you're on one side. Like I'm ready to react in a way that now is lending itself to violence as opposed to like dialogue. Right, exactly, and I, I and, and that's unfortunate. Said, well, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, we can't generalize like that, but it's yeah. it's it, but it's so sad, man. It's so sad to sit back and watch because. Um, because we are such, I think America is a very cool place. It's it's a wonderful yeah, place, man. It's, it is. It is a place of great opportunity. It is a pr- place where uh, people can grow and um, and um, and uh, um, could people a lot can, of opportunity. Can, yeah, a lot of opportunities. I'm sorry, please. I, I lost that. My kid is screaming in the background. No, that's quite all right. That's <laughs> I have six right. children. Her two brothers are going at it right now. So <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. Um, I wind um, it down. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, there is a lot at stake. But, you know, like I said, you got six kids, and that's what I got two myself. So it just really freaks me out because the the world they're inheriting, man, is just like – and not, and not to even be a doom and gloomer. It's just like – it's just I, – I, not to say it's all bad in the world. It's just the climate right now is just so – like I said, very vitriolic, and the divide and conquer is so in full effect, and I'm just like, yeah, man. man. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. And the key word is divide, and it's unfortunate that that is back in play so heavily, yeah. you know. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, that leads us into our final segment, my friend, and I more than thank you for your time. I do have to ask you what I like to call – I do ask to ask you to enter what I like to call the conspiracy triangle of doom, Mr. <laughs> McKay. Very simple. That is so funny, dude. It's crazy. Very oh. simple. Three questions, okay. and they are simple and painless. You can say yes or no, or you can expound if you wish, which is always okay. encouraged. Okay. Question number one, sir. Do you believe in the existence of extraterrestrial intelligence? Maybe I'm crazy, and people are going to go, "Oh, this it, he's Shirley MacLaine." But uh, I, I, I think I don't know. The universe is too big for us just to be the only people here, man. <laughs> There's agree. places we haven't even found yet, right. <laughs> and and, it's, and I, I, I don't think we're the only folks floating around. So yes, it's just They're too pretty- big. A definitive yes from Mr. Antoine. Yeah, yeah. Moving on to question number two. I'm not sure how much you remember this event, sir. What are your thoughts, or do you follow the official narrative of the events of November 22nd, 1963? Of course, this being the official story, Lee Harvey Oswald with his gun shot three shots and killed Kennedy and shot Connolly and did other things with that weapon. Or you have the other side of, uh, you know, conspiracy abound. Inside job, governments, co- Cubans, the mafia, CIA, the list goes on. Um, you know, I, I gosh, these, these, these are, uh, and I've heard this before, these questions are so tough because while I may have that point of view and I may pr- uh, hold on to that, I, um, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's just sad that we, gosh, we lost a president, man. Mm-hmm. Like, that's crazy to think about, you know, and I, I just remember growing up as a kid and um, my mom and grandmothers and aunts all talking about, oh, that John F. Kennedy, that was a handsome man, you know, and he was a good <laughs> leader, you know. Um, shoot, yeah, John F. Kennedy was one of the first real crossovers, if you would. <laughs> right, no, absolutely. <laughs> but, he had um, swag. I mean, the, he was my, uh, I mean, he was like, what, 44, 45 when he died? Right, like, man. Like, yeah, it was crazy. And But, you know, it was um, such a sad time for our country. And, you know, it's, gosh, so many things plays. Uh, and, I, and I think we all know that, you know, there's a stuff out there that's going on. And, you know, right. but, you know, but uh, so. Um, well, see, yeah, your, but, your, your career in politics is not too far off, my friend, because that was a very well-straddled answer without answering. You know what I mean? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was, that was very well-crafted. Well I feel you, though. I feel you. There's, you know, there's, there's, there's ish in the air, but, you know, and, and it, it was a very tragic day. Yeah. Moving on to yet another tragic day, a little bit mm. more contemporarily, the events of September the 11th, 2001. Of course, we have the official story of 19 hijackers from Saudi Arabia doing what they did. And then 
we have, you know, much information of conspiracy abound. Again, what say you, sir? Um, my brother was living in New York when it went down, when it happened, and he was walking to work, and, uh, you know, he was like, dude, I, I could not believe my eyes. He's like, I just heard explosions, and it, it was crazy. It was crazy, and he was like, well, man, you know, you look up, and there's a plane in the tower, and it's so... Mm. Uh, it was so terrifying for him, and you know, and so many people lost their lives that day. And it's like, gosh, it's it's just heartbreaking to even to this day to think about. Um, but uh, gosh, you know, it's, it's and, and I've heard all of the stories, man. I've heard all of the stories and seen the math done by some people, and it's kind of like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say pass. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's one of those almost like the Kennedy. You'll there's no never going to be any definitive right because you just can't as, tell. You can't because yeah, you don't know. Because yeah. yeah. like you said, you you can hang out with people like oh that's an interesting point. Oh that's an interesting. Oh that that is interesting as well. But it's right. just one of those that you could never really quantify into like <clears throat> okay here's X Y is exactly what ha I mean. I guess you can if you really went hard on it. But I, I feel what you're saying. There's 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 questions. There's questions. You know what I mean? Right. There's right, questions. man. Yeah, yeah, you just don't know the truth. You just don't know it. You don't know it. Well, that was see you 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 emerged unscathed from the conspiracy triangle of doom, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so so very much, Antoine. Man, it has been you know it's very hard to pin you down, and I know you're a busy man, and I wish you much continued success. Do you happen to have any kind of social media that you want to shout out, my friends, so we can I follow you? I do. You can follow me on Facebook. It's just Antoine McKay on Facebook and at Antoine McKay on Twitter. Uh, my publicist is always on me like, tweet more, my goodness, yeah. man. <laughs> just like, just Your tweet. fans love you, brother. Yes. Your fans love you. Right, right. Uh, thank you, but yeah, I'm so blessed to, you know, to get the opportunity to do this, man. It's, it's great. Well, and I, I look forward to catching you on any, anything else you got coming up, my man. Stay in touch on uh, on the what's going on with your sitcom. Definitely want to hear more about how that goes. And, uh, again, continue success and peace and all the love. And take care of the fam, my friend. I hear they're out there. Hey, man, there, you do rather. the same, brother. And, uh, man, when we have the premiere, man, you got to come up and check it out, man. Oh, oh, I will viewing. definitely do that. I will definitely do that. We'll stay in touch and we'll pin that when that down uh, when that is. But uh, keep doing your thing, brother. You too, brother. Hey, thanks for talking to the time with me, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yes, it's my pleasure. This has been Mr. Antoine McKay on It's Me Speaking to You. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and stay tuned for more. Peace. Thank you for listening to It's Me Speaking to You. Please spread the word and subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for more conversations with a variety of guests on a variety of subjects.